Hello everyone and welcome back to my Realism Overhaul series in Kerbal Space Program 0.90 Beta. In this episode I hope to launch a communication satellite network in order to provide additional coverage across well, a, a, a little bit more of the globe than we currently have right now and hopefully in doing so enable the recovery of the Goo container launch and so we'll try that again just as we did in the previous episode except this time I want to make sure that we recover it properly but we'll see about that uh, first we have to get the commsats into position now I know a lot of people reminded me that uh, we can set the parachutes to deploy at a certain minimum uh, when it when the pressure is above a certain minimum pressure and there are other ways of making sure that the parachutes deploy even if you don't have communication and yes I forgot some of that uh, in the previous episode but uh, just to give you an idea about what I was thinking about at that point, once I realized that and remembered that I would have to deploy the parachutes and I might not have communication at that point because of line of sight issues and all that, uh, and of course the range of the antenna and the antennas breaking off, once I realized that, I immediately recalled that in my previous Realism Overhaul series, that was the thing that led me to build the ComSat network. That was exactly what led me to create the ComSat network in order to provide coverage. And so that stuck in my head. What I forgot was in that same episode in the previous series, in the previous Realism Overhaul series in point two, three point five, I think it was at that point. Um, at that point, everybody in the comments told me to set the parachutes so that they'll deploy automatically at once it uh, reaches above uh, minimum pressure. And once again, you guys all reminded me that I should do that. And uh, yeah, yeah, uh, that is a definite way to solve this problem. Uh, another mistake I made in the previous episode while we're going through those is that I hadn't upgraded um, uh, the stock extension, uh, lax uh, stock extension mod. And so that is why I didn't have the AJ-10 or the Vanguard. So, without further ado, what I want to do here right now is unlock these since they are currently locked. Uh, the models that used to belong to the AJ-10 uh, early upper stage engine and the Vanguard booster uh, are now for these two engines, the RD-0105 uh, and of course the RD-58, and which is non-RP-0 for some reason. But anyway... Um, and so those are unlocked and uh, so I need to unlock these now so I've well well anyway I'm, I'm sure it's alright yeah okay AJ-10 alright so now we've got the the engines that I had before so that's helpful and I'm sure I'll use at least one of these two in the rocket that I'm going to build right now but I've already built the satellites well at least uh, some semblance of the satellites so these are what we're going to be launching. As you can see, a four-pack. Everything is built around this thrust plate multi-adapter. So uh, this was the first, the root piece. And then I started building out from there. These are decouplers. I used the smallest decouplers I could. Hopefully it'll be stable, but I'm not sure. I might want to either put... Uh, making the decouplers larger increases the cost, but probably not too much increases the mass as well a little bit. I guess that looks a little bit more stable. Anyway, um, so MMHN204, the little RCS blocks are configured to MMHN204. They all have to be placed individually, of course. Symmetry is working across the four probes rather than around the, each probe. So solar panels, these are half size, they're half a meter and uh, hopefully they'll provide the necessary electric power. That's a problem. You can see that the fuse box isn't telling me that there's any drain at all. The Explorer probe core is telling me that it takes 2.2 per hour, which is not very much, which explains the zero drain. And the antennae are telling me that they take zero charge per second. Now, I'm not too sure I have a lot of faith in all that, but uh, that's what we have to go with. And here we are. These probes have a lot of uh, a lot of propellant to them, and so hopefully they'll be able to get into their necessary orbits without any trouble. Uh, but I'm, I have the rest of the rocket to build, as you can see. I started out, but then 
I uh, decided I was going to start off with the Air B sustainer, but I figured that actually the better engine here would be the AJ10. So I'm going to uh, have an AJ10 third stage, I think. So anyway, I will build the rest of this rocket and come back to you with that. Okay, I think I'm satisfied with what I've got here. I've decided to reduce the size of the probes, as you can see, and the sort of con conify, I guess you could say, turn into a conic, the cylindrical tanks here. Still MMHN204, and I have shut off these tanks so that they don't accidentally get used at any point during launch, though. That was more important when I had uh, stages using uh, RCS thrusters. Originally what I had was I had a well first of all I had the Aero B stage which definitely would need RCS thrusters and then I had the AJ-10 upper stage here and that well sorta could have used RCS thrusters. It has its own HTP RCS and it also has uh, gimbling so it didn't strictly need it as much but then I completely removed RCS in choosing this engine the RD uh, zero 01, is it a zero 0105 right now? Okay, it's zero 0105. Um, I don't think I need to go up to this one. It's just a little bit more thrust, and right now I've got a thrust weight ratio of 1 at the high level, so that's no problem. Uh, this is definitely an upper stage engine. It's got 316 vacuum, which is better than anything else, uh, except for this one, which is non RP0, so can't use that. Uh, so, uh, yeah, it's the best upper stage engine, so I decided to not go with the AJ-10. If I tried to use the AJ-10 here, uh, this would not have enough delta V, uh, even with the slightly smaller probes. Uh, I shouldn't say probes, satellites. So, um, so yeah, I needed the, this engine in order to make this work out. And also the higher thrust and uh, kerosene liquid oxygen better mix. In fact, this is our first rocket that is completely kerosene and liquid oxygen. The second stage is the Vanguard. Okay, so uh, the Vanguard engine has 133 max thrust, as you can see. Not quite as good in vacuum as the as the upper stage engine that we have there, but uh, it is well. It's got thrust, which is important. One thing that confused me, by the way is that if you uh, go over here you see igniter electric one right but here in the description we've got engine igniter saying can ignite for one time igniter type hypergolic right here so there's some disagreement about whether the igniter is hypergolic or whether it is electric the hypergolic worries me because if it's hypergolic that these are not hypergolic fuels so sometimes in previous iterations of engine igniter we needed other fuels in order to ignite the engine and of course in real life they do use other fuels in order to ignite the engine so I'm just worried whether that's a thing or not whether this will properly ignite we haven't used it ever before so we'll have to see anyway Vanguard of course was not meant as a second stage engine it was a booster engine, it should be used in the first stage, but I'm using it in the second stage anyway because there's nothing stopping me. Um, what I am... Uh, okay, and uh, just a note, uh, you see the little one uh, thrust engine here. That is the one with the gimbling range of 25. That's uh, in fact, well actually two with the gimbling range of 25. Th those are actually the vernier thrusters that are now built into the Vanguard booster. Uh, it itself already has a gimbling range of 5 degrees which is quite a lot so I don't think we'll need any additional control there and of course the base engine is the LR79 that we were well it's actually an LR89 that we were using before and so that is going to be the situation now call this rocket Manas technically that's just an abstraction thought it's not technically a god but then again gods and goddesses are abstractions anyway so um, we'll go with that as our name for this rocket. Uh, completely orange because all of it is uh, kerosene liquid oxygen in cryogenic tanks. Okay, so you can see the uh, since these are off, uh, their delta V is not being counted. So that's the delta V of the three stages. You can see 8 minutes and 30 seconds to orbit. Uh, plenty of buffer. In fact, uh, we could carry a much heavier payload. This is now a 1 ton payload, which is less than the capacity for this launcher. And yes, let's just get on with it. And for launching four satellites, it's pretty reasonable in cost. I think this will be good as long as it works. 
Okay, so when I put the fairings on previously, it didn't. Uh, it it read uh, much higher delta V than it does now. But now that I've put the fairings on again, uh, it has decided to reduce my delta V to less than I wanted. And since I do have a lot of thrust weight ratio available to me, I'm just going to extend the top stage to uh, well, let's say four minutes. That's that's fair enough. Make it a four minute stage, that'll give us the buffer and uh, allow us to retain a certain possibility of launching a larger payload. This is a two meter diameter rocket by the way altogether. Alright, so just a little update on that situation. Okay, so here we go. Throttle up. SAS on. And launch. a little bit of time to release the launch clamps. There's a little bit of a delay here. Uh, speaking of which, let's make sure Explorer cores are all active. So, we're going to uh, have a relatively low periapsis, but we're going to boost it up to a high apoapsis. And then each of the satellites can circularize at their, uh, at their proper phase. By the way, somebody had recommended distant object enhancement. I've I have installed that. I I should do something about the terrain though. This is really dark. It's pretty much pitch black here. I thought switching away from OpenGL would help, but it hasn't. I suppose we could reduce the inclination of the satellites a little bit. They don't have to be at 28. Uh, We'll see what order we get into it and see to what extent we can correct that. I still didn't uh, replace the re-entry with the newer version. What's this? Oh, that's the distant object enhancement, okay. We have pretty high thrust weight ratio throughout, so I'm just going to go to 25 pitch now. I think it'll be able to handle it. And that'll help keep our apoapsis down while uh, our periapsis down while boosting our apoapsis. Okay, first stage out, set, and Vanguard ignite. Okay, I hear it ignited, but I don't see it ignited. What's up? Fuel flow very unstable, okay, well, um, alright, tell you what, let me dump the fairings. Well, we don't even have an igniter on the, on the Vanguard anymore, do we? Yeah, it's only ignition is, is off. So there's really no point. Oh, don't do that. I don't want you to start doing that. Okay, uh, so yeah, this whole stage is done for. Uh, let's discard and move on, I guess, is the thing. Hmm. Very interesting. All right. All right, so we need RCS to push us forward, check fuel flow, very stable. All right, ignite. All right, well, we've got this going. We're not going to be able to put all the satellites into orbit, but we might be able to put a few, or at least one. Gonna extend the additional commutrons here. Uh, the outer commutrons are Ashen Group 2 1, and so I can extend them like this. Obviously, right now we're not going for orbit, but I put one kilonewton thrusters on these guys for a reason. So which one do I need to shut down, speaking of which? This one needs to be shut down. Alright. So I'm going to unlock all the probes tanks now. So, note for future reference, uh, stage the Vanguard at the same time as first stage set, probably. No delay would be better there. Might work, might not work. Probably uh, Separatrons giving a boost ahead of time before igniting the Vanguard will work as well. 
As it is, we're going to be about 1,800 to 1,900 short of orbit. Seems like it thinks that the probes have about 2,200 each, which would be barely enough to get them into orbit. If I could do more than one, I don't know. It depends on how much time I have, which is not exactly time to apoapsis, but that's a big part of it. I don't know what the burn time on the probes is. Four minutes. Ouch. Okay, quickly separate one. Okay, I want to follow that one. Right. Uh, activate engine. And... And what we need is... Surface zero heading five oh yeah and RCS. Oh two thousand six hundred meters per second, not bad. Sure using a lot though. It's probably mainly trying to whoa. It's got pitch control issues. That's weird. Come on. Come on. Why can I control the pitch when Smart ASS can? Okay, Smart ASS, you're off. You are off. The high apoapsis is intended. I, I want. I'm going for an eccentric orbit at this point. I'd actually like one about three hours. But uh, let me leave it at this for now. Okay, uh, because I want to go back to our other portion. Okay, well, I'm amazed that I was able to get to this successfully. All right. Uh, we were going down. Come on, let me decouple and follow that. And activate that and go. And this time we need to remain at a high pitch because we are going down. We are pointing in the wrong direction. How is that? We accidentally increased our inclination. Not intentional. Let's actually go ahead and fix some of that. We are not going to have much left over in this one. And I'm just going to let it burn out. Ooh, periapsis not quite high enough. That's not good. It'll probably still survive. I don't think it's gonna deorbit anytime soon, but not what I wanted. Our two new satellites very close to each other. So this is in a one hour and thirty one minute orbit. Okay, this one is in a slightly longer orbit. So what I want to do is boost that even longer. Ah, darn. I did the wrong thing. Okay. <sighs> Alright, well anyway. Two satellites up. No, it, it looks like I've left it at an orientation where it's not going to maintain electric charge. Honestly, this launch was a mess to begin with, with the second stage failing. This is These aren't in the orbits I wanted them to be in. So... But, maybe we can still do the mission. Okay, I think I'm going to try this again anyway. Despite the fact that the satellite launch wasn't entirely successful, well, was a dismal failure. Um, I've made some changes as you can see and that is using the Reflectron DP-10s which are activated by default and don't snap off in the atmosphere and you can see I've placed four here which means this thing should have a range of at least 4,000 kilometers uh, so that's one change and the other change I'm sure uh, we all agree should be done is that the pressure for pre-deployment is now 0.3 atmospheres which is about where 
Uh, I think even daily reentry will say it's safe. So yeah, I'll try and activate the parachutes ahead of time and we'll see if that works out. Uh, I might not be doing that right because I haven't been in the practice of doing uh, deploying parachutes such that they automatically deploy without communication, but uh, just in case we have that option. And so we've got that going for us. I still do want to put up a satellite network, but I think I want to get this contract done even... Why is the total Delta V only 8,860? Hold on, let's recover this. Uh, Delta V closed here. Yeah, it says 8,860. How does that work out? The only thing I changed was slap the antennas on, and the antennas are a negligible amount of mass. Indeed. And then... So let me take those... Actually, they're not negligible at all. Wow, that's a lot of mass. Let me just undo that. Um... So that's 200 uh, K. I think I, I see, well, the other thing I changed was the parachutes. So, hold on. Uh-oh. And they're back to having pre-deployment pressure 0.01. That's not very friendly of it. Let me take the parachutes off. Well, of course it has more delta view for the parachutes off, but... Ah. So here I took the parachutes off, 9,563, put the parachutes on. That's the Delta V I expected to see. But let's say I try to adjust the pre-deployment pressure again. Is this the right place to do it? Yeah, it looks like it. All these windows within windows. Okay, apply. Ah. Now the total delta V has gone down dramatically. All right, so I've separated the probe from the rest of the launcher, and real shoots is not playing nice with me. Is basically the point. Um, at first, I thought it was just tweak skill not playing nice with real shoots, which is why I went with these real shoots parachutes. Uh, just um, these ones instead of these ones. These ones I had uh, tweak scale down. You see, I had gone down to 0.5 like that. So I wondered if that was the problem. But this probe I had just saved and I went out and I came back in and loaded it up again. Before I went out it was 0.6 tons and now it's 0.4 tons. Okay witness, now I have attached the launcher to the Dara one, the same launcher that we have been using with this probe. And we've got enough, just barely, uh, it would be like the, previ uh, the previous attempt with this probe which was just barely getting into orbit kind of thing. If we attach back the the fairings, let's do that. Ah, 9,236. Uh, 100 short as, as so often happens. I want to retest the Vanguard stage to see if I can relight it in uh, in flight. So I'm going to switch this stage up with a Vanguard instead of six of the Aero B sustainers. Okay, this sort of rocket suits me. I think I'm going to add those separation motors just in case. Not to separate here, but to give a boost here. Wow, they're big. Can we... we can't tweak scale them. Ha. Huh. Okay, well, how about these? Well, these in these are in line. I don't like that. I guess I'll just have to rely on these little RCS ports. Hopefully, they can settle the stuff down before we fire the Vanguard. All right, and since we're going to be using RCS to settle stuff down before firing Vanguard, I am going to need to make sure to deactivate these tanks. Okay, I don't want to come up with a totally new name just because replace the second stage with a Vanguard stage. So I am going to just call it Dara 2. We'll accept that it is a variant on the Dara 1. 
All right. As if this is our only problem. We've got a lot of problems with this probe, but it's a somewhat improved and a somewhat improved situation. We've got the pre-deployment altitude set. Uh, I've never done that before, so I don't know if I'm doing it right. Looking at it, this is a pretty poor rocket in terms of performance. It gets less than 1% of its launch mass into orbit. But, uh, and of course, that's mainly because everything is in line and we're not using boosters or anything like that. But if you're, if you're hankering for boosters, don't worry, I'm way ahead of you. Alright, let's just try this though. Alright, and go. We've got four of those always on antennae with a range of 4,000 kilometers. So I don't even need to check where the Explorer probe is activated. We can do that later on. And yeah, let's stage vent. Well, no. I'll, I'll check to make sure that the fuel is still down before I actually light Vanguard. The, I should say the X405 instead of just calling it Vanguard. The X405. I'm making it pretty steep, actually. It's not good. Okay, so stage. Let's check the fuel status here. Come on, uh, I need to see the fuel status. Okay, it says very stable. Light. Okay. Alright, no problems. Didn't even need the RCS thrusters or this MMHN 204, but good to have it. Ah, uh, X405. Why couldn't you have been so amenable last time? Gotta double check the info on it. Redeployment pressure, 0.3 atmospheres. Okay, separate. And this time we need RCS and light. Probably need at least three degrees on. Oh, uh, not 30. Not 33. Just three. Just three. Just three. Calm down. Well, while we are in space, let us observe Mystery Goo. Alright, we are once again gonna keep that data. Barometer is useless. Thermometer we've already done over the ocean. As well as the experiment in the Explorer probe, which we can now activate. Okay, here we go. I'll probably have to shut it down. Okay, well, I don't know which came first, whether it ran out or shut down. I was just focused on the periapsis number there. Alright, so... Well, it can sort of drift. I'm going to... Decouple that. Yep, nothing else to do here. Did it run out? No, it didn't quite run out. Okay, so I switched it off first. Okay, all our fuel is there. Fine. And let us activate that fuel. And RCS a little bit away. Alright, so we are in orbit. Now is the coming back down part. Where are our satellites? Well, uh, the one that we just launched and is in a nice high orbit is over here. Which means we're going faster than it, so we're going to overshoot it. That's not particularly good, is it? Let me just do a test. Let's see if I wanted to get into a higher orbit temporarily. This is just me testing out ideas right now. Obviously, we could get down with the parachute and use the pre-deployment thing or try the pre-deployment thing I'm not too sure I'm doing it right but, but I also want to see if I can figure out how to time these things properly oh we just lost connection maybe you should just wait until the other satellite comes around 
Yeah, let's just wait. Okay, so we're here and ComSat launch is there. I don't think that's close enough. Gonna go around one more time. And then we'll retro burn on the next go around. Probably gonna hit the Pacific Ocean west of Central America. It's not very good, is it? We don't have any comm stations like that. But the others are supposed to help with that. Maybe we should aim a little bit closer to California. Okay, here we go. We do have satellite support. We've got... Oh, uh, there's there's us. We've got the high, pro, uh, high satellite that we launched, uh, Pusan 3, and then the low one is also here. I think everybody's going to lose connection soon. I'm not too sure about this. Let's see. So, if I tell the parachutes to activate now, what's going to happen? So, let's say, arm parachute. Is it even armed? Okay, I've armed. Okay, so they're armed now. Alright. But I'm still interested to see whether I've got this whole system worked out, whether I understand what I'm doing with respect to the communications or not. I'm basically wasting the fuel and that's just to make the probe lighter, make it safer for the parachutes. Okay, I don't think I need full time warp anymore. Still in communication and we are now slowing down so all those satellites should catch up with us. Our inclination isn't helping, but uh, we're pretty close to where the inclination of those satellites crosses our, crosses our orbit. Communication situation. Tight link. Everybody's depending on this one right now. The high satellite that we just launched in this episode. Still haven't uh, used the blade of shielding yet at this point. But we're getting to the temperatures where it's starting to deplete. Uh, let's see, probably around 600 degrees Celsius? No? Come on, the blade of shielding. There we go. Uh, so, what, are, what is that? That's gotta be Hawaii, right? So we are linking through Hawaii. We didn't make it to the west coast. Chief forces are pretty high. Yeah, wow. Shoot deployment unsafe all the way up at 42 kilometers. In terms of G-forces, I think it's still within the realm of reason for, for a Kerbal. So that's interesting. Probably would want to go higher in the atmosphere than 70 kilometers though. Okay, still in communication. I'm gonna take RCS thrust off now. Otherwise, SAS will be fighting against the tendency of the retrograde vector. Still linking through the satellite that we launched in this episode and completely dependent on that. Point one atmospheres now. Point three should occur around the place where uh, parachutes automatically deploy for like Apollo and all. I think it's... Oh. And right there was where the program decided to crash on me. And so we're back here with the probe still in orbit. I was looking forward to finding out whether the pre-deployment would actually work, but I have to go through this all over again. Okay, here we go. Oh, 
after Kerbal Joint Reinforcements. Now we can Retro Burn. And hopefully we'll get similar results as last time. I think I've got it. The satellite situation seems like it's going to evolve the same general way. We might land further west than we did the last time. I think I retro burned at a different point. Okay, we're once again encountering the tough part of the atmosphere. Blade of shielding is melting away. And G-forces are building. But we've already seen this before, and there's every expectation that this thing will survive it. Communication situation is a little bit tough, like it was last time, through the through the higher satellite that we launched in this episode. Gotta name it something, I guess, now. I'll have to think about what to name satellite. We need a satellite naming convention. We've got a rocket naming convention. I'm using uh, Hindu gods and goddesses and other, what you call it, uh, abstract entities. But uh, I need something for satellites now. And other probes. We haven't been naming our probes. This one's just called General Probe. So, something. I'll think about it, don't worry. Okay, well, we've still got connection. I'm going to turn RCS off. Really, Smart ASS does not need to be doing all that. Got to turn Smart ASS off and just go with SAS. So, uh, yep, uh, 0.3 should be fine. 0.3 atmospheres. Let's see. No, it's not deploying. Uh, okay. Oh, no, it deployed there. That's point 0.4, isn't it? Shouldn't you have pre-deployed at point 0.3? Oh, and just before we had no connection. That's that's very tricky of it. All right, well, I'll take it. At least it deployed. Uh, let's make sure it uh, fully deploys, though. Uh, how do we... I guess it was just a range thing. We're, we've technically got line of sight with our ComSat launch, but I guess we're out of range. Okay, full parachute deployments. A nice 4.8 meters per second. So yeah, we lost connection because the satellite we were connected to, the one that we launched in this episode, lost connection with Hawaii. So it went out of range, we didn't. So we are still in range of that satellite. So next episode, probably patching up the satellite network. Try that launch again. Maybe I should wait till later. I, I'll take a look at what the contracts have to say and maybe if there's a good contract available I'll go with that first. Okay, well no real splash. Can we recover at least? Okay. Before something breaks off or something. I've got better buoyancy but for some reason still have trouble with the not getting splashes. Anyway, Mystery Goo Observation in Space Near Kerbin. Got it back. 13 science. We have recovered a vessel from Kerbin orbit. We got some science for that. Uh, the value returned is only about 412 funds. That's pretty pitiful. Uh, but we got a probe core. We've got the experiments back. The thruster blocks. The Mystery Goo. 13 is a big number apparently. The heat shield costs a lot. huh? The most. Uh, it's uh, almost half of the total cost. And... Uh, we had some fuel left, but apparently it has no value to it. That's interesting. Okay. So that's it. And uh, probably the we, we would have gotten more funds if we landed closer to KSC, but not that much. Anyway, contract fulfilled though. So what we have left here is explore the moon. Temperature scans of the moon, science data from space around the moon. I'm seeing a little pattern here. Position of satellite in a specific orbit around the moon. Mimus is totally off. Mimus is not where the program thinks it is. Uh, we got the human spaceflight. Didn't didn't it uh, claim that? Okay. We, okay, it gave us that contract, and now it's giving us that contract again. Well, I'm not gonna accept this contract until I'm good and ready to do it. 
So maybe, maybe we've got enough to do it in the next episode. I'll have to tinker with some rockets to see if that's a thing I want to do. Or maybe we should send a probe over to the moon. Um, I'll think about that. All right. So uh, we've got <laughs> another Kerbal uh, waiting in orbit for us to pick him up. All right. So uh, with that, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this episode, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.